And uh, I'll tell you the absolute truth. I got I got um, fired because I wasn't good enough. When I did move here, I didn't have a secure place to live. I didn't have yes. a job. <laughs> yes. So I was a little bit, uh, yeah, why did I do it? <laughs> I've been absolutely lazy with learning German myself. I could be speaking German by now. I was aiming for like the international students. I would like to make them all connected with each other. Making friends with anybody is, is the same thing. You've got to have something in common to talk about. As long as you're on the path of what you want to do, it doesn't matter how many steps forward uh, it, it takes, it's, it's going to be fine. So guys, welcome for this channel. I know that you want to live abroad and sometimes you just wonder because there are so many unknown certainties in the future. And that's why I make a lot of interviews with people who actually make their way successful in Germany. And when you are being abroad, sometimes you have to think out of the box and to think of creative solutions. And what kind of people do you think that they can think of creative stuff? So today I'm so happy to actually invite my friend Ryan, who is a guitar player, songwriter, and also guitar teacher in Germany. His journey to Germany has only been a few years, but it was a huge success for him, and that's the reason I want to interview him. During the time when he was in Germany, he had one album released, and some of the songs are actually being well received in England across the English radio stations there. And even this time, he set up a business in Germany, in Munich, to actually teach people how to play guitar in English. In fact, if you search in Google, Munich English Guitar Lesson, he will be the top one that you can find. And what I really like about him personally is that not only is he just teaching guitar, but he's always giving back. So during his time when he is traveling around the world, he actually teach kids how to play guitar and to bring joy and happiness to them. And that's something not so common these days. Last but not least, he is also teaching sometimes about the mindset, how to handle the fear to learn a new musical instrument, how to handle when you have a roadblock, when you're learning something new. And so I'm so sure that we can all learn a lot from him today and how he make his way successful in Germany. So thanks, Ryan. You're welcome. So good to have you here. <laughs> thanks for having me, man. <laughs> Do you like my introduction? I love it. Very, very good. <laughs> thanks. So in this interview, we actually have three sections. The first one is about um, your background, how you came to Germany. Mm -hmm. And then the second one is about some of the common obstacles people will face when they come to Germany. And the last one is getting personal, which I will talk about later. The very first time was kind of a bit of a serendipitous moment because I was working in Austria and I actually was working as a, a musician in a, in, a, in a bar for the ski season. And uh, I'll tell you the absolute truth, I got, I got um, fired because I wasn't good enough. Uh, it wasn't, I wasn't what they were looking for. For playing guitar? Or? For playing guitar and singing. Okay. <clears throat> and since that, I've obviously tried to improve what I do and make it a little bit better. But um, when uh, on that actual night, I met two people there who, who were living in Munich. And uh, they said, uh, oh, that's, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do now? <laughs> I said, uh, I, pff, I have no idea. I knew I didn't want to go back to England because I'd already made the conscious decision that I wanted to step out. Okay. Be a bit more independent uh, and, and do things abroad, see more of the world. Uh, so I came to visit these two friends in Munich and ended up staying here for about a month and a half. I think it was about 2014 in February, something like this. Okay. And um, made some friends, um, started to go to the open mic nights and met some musicians. And I just thought, this place is pretty cool. And one of the main reasons that made me come back here after traveling for about a year was because I knew I could get some work. I could, I could uh, play some gigs. Yeah. I didn't know whether I could make a living from the guitar teaching at that point. Yeah. But... Um, I had the freedom to make a decision and uh, uh, Munich felt like the right place to be. I, I don't really know uh, why that was, yeah. you know, it's just a feeling. And I, I was following my feelings at the time more than uh, logic, I think. <laughs> I actually like that story because um, from a lot of people that I've talked to, most of them never thought about Germany being their first choice when they want to move abroad. And I guess it's kind of similar to you yeah, as well. Yeah, I, I never would have thought that I would live in Munich. It's yeah. just just a path that, that opened up in front of me and I just went with it. You I don't be 
well, I got started by uh, sleeping on a friend's sofa, and I had a backpack, okay, uh, and really not much else. Um, I had a sofa at least, and then I started flat hunting. Okay, and um, I think it was like the first or second place I I, I looked at. Yeah, um, super lucky. It was in Pulach actually, and it was just from an advert on Facebook. I said, uh, oh, "I'm interested. I'll come and see it." It was a tiny little, I think, twelve square meter room uh, in the basement. Yeah, um, but I knew my budget. My budget was the thing I had to stick to, and it was about four hundred a month. And this was the cheapest thing I could find, <laughs> and it got me started. When I did move here, I didn't have a secure place to live. I didn't have yes a job. <laughs> yes, so I was a little bit. Uh, yeah, why did I do it? <laughs> hero, hero. I don't want to be that moment when you decide to come here, you were, you know, couch surfing kind of, mm -hmm. and you didn't have a job and you have to look for cheap places. Were you scared? No, not really. Um, the main reason is because I was riding this wave of um, just, just letting the universe tell me what to do. Um, <laughs> and I'd been couch surfing for a year at that point already. Yeah. And I knew that if it, it didn't quite work out, that I could, I could, you know, I could make some decisions. I had some savings, so I wasn't in a rush to, um, you know, to like get this done, get this done. It was, it was okay, you know. I really like it because a lot of time, I think people, they try to plan every single thing before they make a move. Mm. And I really like to hear it because <clears throat> I'm not saying everybody, you know, just jump to take the plane and come to Germany the next day. But it's actually good to hear some stories. People like you crazy enough to make that action for the first step. Mm. So um, afterwards, so you find a place and then what else next? Well, um, I wasn't looking for a job. I knew that I wanted to make my living with my guitar, as I have been doing for the past 12 or 13 years in England. Um, so I know I'm able to do it. Um, so there's a few little things that I knew I could do. I could still find work abroad. Yeah. Um, usually the, the places I play, um, I can play there for long enough that it makes the flights affordable, that, you know, they provide the, the, the place to stay and the, f and the food and things like this. Um, I knew that I could get some gigs here, and I yeah. knew that if my outgoings were low enough, I wasn't really pressured to have to do a lot of work. I could do just enough to keep me going. And then as things build and build, um, you know, you, you get another place and you get another opportunity here. I'll keep living with an easy feeling. Um, it's always better if you have like a word of mouth thing or somebody recommends you, but that's why the first place I always go is to the open mic nights. You, you've got to meet the musicians. Yeah. You've got to go to these venues. And if they like you and you can find out whether you can play there or if there's an offer, another opportunity or maybe somebody sees you there and they book you for a Wohnzimmer concert or uh, for a birthday party. There's all sorts of things that can happen. And uh, Interesting. So you went there <laughs> alone to meet people. Yeah. Again, you were not afraid of this anyway. Well, I'm, I think I am... Um, I'm self-conscious and, and I, I worry about things and I'm not super like forthcoming yeah. uh, you know if if I speak to somebody and it's okay but I, I would never really approach a group of people and go hey everybody I'm yeah. new yeah uh, <laughs> of course um, just meet people one at a time but yeah I, I, I never really had a, a major a major problem um, with that sort of thing everyone I've met has been super nice and kind and yeah um, they're easy to talk to, like yourself. Yeah. I think that's very inspirational in a way that um, a lot of foreigners, when they come here, you know, um, I'm not saying that the Germans are not welcome you because it really depends on the person. But sometimes, as a foreigners, I think we have to take the first step, actually, to go out there to new people to meet them. Mm. Otherwise, you know, if you're just sitting at your home, nothing's going to happen. That's what I. Absolutely, realized. you have to. You, yeah, you've got to get out there. Yeah, and I, I, I have heard people say that at Munich specifically. Like the people here are not very welcoming. They're a bit <laughs> like this, yeah. and I, I never had an uh, an, an ex example of that. Everyone okay. I ever met was polite, kind, give you advice if you need it, or, or help if you. But maybe I'm just lucky, and I just meet nice people all the time. I, uh, that's fine yeah, with me. Of course, <laughs> and I want to jinx it. Oh, my Um, no, I never really encountered any problems. The okay. first thing you need to do is get your Anne Meldung so that you yeah. can get a place to live. You need to register with the Steuer Amt and, yeah. the, and the health insurance, for, um, what's it called, um, Versicherungs? Yeah, yeah. Gesundheitsversicherung. <laughs> um, yeah. And I think 
I think those are the three main first things. Uh, and then the, the, the is it the AHZ? Was it the, yeah, I love the ones that, that, that they will not stop sending you letters? <laughs> Which one? You mean the, the one with the TV license? Ah, yeah, the ZDF, the radio yes, license. Yes, yeah. Even so, though if you don't watch TV, I know. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. I was, I was like, like, what's going on with this? Why do I have to pay this? And like, I, I'll be honest. Yeah. Nobody okay. wants to pay this fine, right, or whatever it is. So I, I ended up paying it just because I was sick of the paper they were wasting sending ah, me freaking okay, letters all the time. <laughs> but you know, you probably won't post this bit. But <laughs> no, it's fine because even for me, I actually have a huge bill uh, after studying in Germany mm. because when I was a student, I don't have to pay for that. Yeah. And when I start working, I was like, I was working full time while waiting my master thesis, and I don't have a TV. So I was like, I'm not watching TV. Why should I pay mm. for anything? And eventually, I found out that unless you are blind and you can't hear, mm. you have to pay. It's crazy, right? It's, but it's Germany, it's okay. I mean, every country has its own good and bad things, so that's yeah. why. Yeah, but it's, it's one of these uh, things, like you have to have an Amazon, you have to yeah. register with the story ramps, of course. Uh, the health insurance was something that I was quite surprised about. I didn't know about that. Because okay. in England, the health insurance is, you just get free health insurance. It's, it's, it's paid for already. I go through what's called the Kunstler Sozialkasse, yeah. which is, I think it's specifically for musicians, yeah. <clears throat> which means um, I get uh, a little bit of help with paying that. Ah, okay. And, I see, I heard about that as well, yeah. And then the TV license thing, yeah, you just make sure that that's paid. Um, and, yeah, and the rent. <laughs> that's something quite unique. Can you talk about this support that you just mentioned from the German government if you're a musician? Well, somebody, another musician told me about it. Okay. If they hadn't told me, I would have never known. So, okay. Um, if you're a musician living in Germany and you're paying health insurance, which of course you have to be, yeah, because if you're not, you're going to end up paying it later on anyway, all backdated. Um, you can register with the Künstler Social Casa. I think it's about a hundred page form you have to fill out. Okay. It felt like about a hundred pages and then you send it off and then they, they, they let you know how much. And you, um, you did it all by yourself? No, no, I had help. No. Okay. Yeah. I actually had help from a friend called Aro and Bianca. Uh, she helped me with the Steueramt as well. And they are all Germans? Yes, they live here. Okay. And my friend Sean, he helped me with the um, Anne Meldung thing. Yeah, so you need, you definitely need help like with the language barrier. These are the things yes. that you need that for, for absolutely certain. Because I would be so surprised to know that if you can all do this all by yourself, because you know, we heard about this German bureaucracy, so many documents, it's mm. kind of tedious work, right? Yeah, yeah you, need, you need help. Yeah. So, So um, in terms of playing music or making money out of music, <coughs> do you see any difference uh, in terms of environment or about the society here in Germany and in, in England? Yes. Um, in England, uh, a lot of the gigs I was doing was playing in pubs and I didn't feel like um, the audience was really uh, listening as much. Okay. Um, maybe that was because I, I wasn't good enough. I think there's, they were just watching football, right? <laughs> there's, always, there's always that. But in Germany, yeah. One of the first things I noticed when I played is everybody's sitting forward. They are looking, they are watching, and they they clap. Uh, this is one thing, they, they clap at least three times longer than you think they should. Cool, like, okay. Because I'm always like, that was good. And then I would stop around there. And then, I don't know, it's just one of the things I noticed. It's just about... It makes 30 sense. seconds. <laughs> because now I remember when you watch, even if you watch a movie in Germany, you know, mm. all these credit scenes, there are a lot of people actually sit there to wait for the last moment. I haven't seen that bit. Only with Marvel movies. But, uh... Okay, because people are looking for, you know, the ending scene or yeah, something. Yeah, but in general, um, Germans told me they like to stay there to watch because to support it. Because mm. whereas in Hong Kong, you know, once a movie is finished, no one stay there to watch. Mm. And I get it similar to people respect that you are playing music or performing something. Could yeah, be. I, think, I think, I think the, the, the German uh, people, they do respect that. Okay, so actually, um, in short, what is the good things about Germany that you like about being a musician here? There's plenty of work, and I, I was quite surprised. Some other musicians say that Munich isn't the best place for, for being a musician. Yeah, people told me Berlin. Normally. Yeah, Berlin or... Um, yeah, I mean, Munich, Munich is a well... Um, what's the word? Like, everyone here is doing well. Yeah. There's a lot of people with, with money, there's a lot of people... Everybody wants entertainment, and um, as long as you put yourself out there and people know that you're available, then you know there's uh, there's these things you can play for people's private parties. You can you can go to open mic nights and, and sell your music, or you can there's there's lots of things you can do. The the other thing about like the, the fact that I travel as a musician, being in Munich is a nice central part yeah. of Europe. Um, I can 
Italy. Because uh, yeah, so I, I regularly play like Austria. This is for next door. Uh, Norway, uh, Greece, these sorts of things. They're a little bit closer, um, a bit more accessible. And the fact that I'm living in close to the city as a teacher is very beneficial for me because a lot of the students that I have, oh, yeah. they don't have to travel so far. And um, yeah, at the moment, my guitar groups is, is actually the, the thing that I spend most of my time doing. Um, let's move to the next topic is about the common challenges people have in Germany. And I would like to know every guest what is their opinion and how to kind of provide a solution, so I know a better way to handle this. So the first thing is a lot of people think German is too hard to learn and life is too short to learn German. So hmm. what's your opinion about this so far as an English speaker? Um, I'll be completely honest with you. I've been absolutely lazy with learning German myself. Yeah. I, could, I could be speaking German by now. There's, yeah. no, there's no excuse. Me too, right? actually. Yeah. So you just got to use it. There, there's something where you can get an integrations course and you can sign up for this and you can get lessons. I think it's for something like three euros an hour. Yeah. But you have to pay for all of the hours at once. It's like 600 euros. Yeah. But you get like a year's worth of... So some people might not have that 600 euros straight away. But maybe there's another thing that I don't know about where you can get help with that, that finance. Yeah. Thing. Um, but everybody here pretty much speaks English. Yeah. And I have noticed that if I try to speak German, they reply in English. Yeah. Anyway. So... That hasn't helped my laziness. <laughs> yeah. And so you, there was no moment you feel like you have not been welcome because of the language problem here, isn't it? No. I mean, the only problem I would say is just with the, the bureaucracy yes. side of things, like the forms, you need somebody to translate them for you. Um, yeah, for sure. In, even if your German is good, you should have a native speaker to of check course. over these things. Yeah. And in general, you feel like Germans is quite open to talking in English to make friendship as well, right? From your experience? From my experience, I, I haven't had an issue with it. I mean, I've never really got a cold uh, reaction from, from anybody. But um, on the other hand, I haven't like just walked up to a stranger and expected yeah. um, you know, something from them or something. Um, and I think the best example, I don't know if this part will be included, is that the fact that you have a German girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So how did it work out, if you don't mind sharing? How does it work out? Yes, in the beginning. I mean, uh, well, we, we met at a, a bar. She's, she's here now. Yeah. <laughs> the camera girl, actually. <laughs> we met at a bar. Um, she was working at the bar. I was playing at the bar. I saw her. I was interested to find out more about her. Yeah. And um, uh, I actually asked the manager who worked there, just, just, oh, just what's her name? Yeah. And he told me her name. And then uh, I went, okay, cool. And I just left. But um, we ended up uh, messaging on, on Facebook. And uh, yeah, we've been together now for two years. Uh, living together for two years. Okay, much. so it's, yeah. I don't see language as a problem here, right? No, when I first met her, I thought she was Australian. Because <laughs> <laughs> she has a very uh, strong Australian ex English accent. All right. Um, so um, we, we, we speak English together 99% um, of the time. Okay. Um, I just want to share a little bit because I never talk about that. And I just realized that um, when I had a German girlfriend, I thought my German would be so much better mm -hmm. because it's a perfect opportunity to practice it, right? Mm -hmm. And every time when we had arguments, I lose <laughs> because there's no way I can win in German. Yeah. So I gave up and I said, you know what? I would just argue in English instead. And then my German didn't improve during that time. So, so that you spend best. most of your time arguing and that's... <laughs> <laughs> Not like that, <laughs> but sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. And that's funny. Um, so uh, on the other hand, um, I just want to let people know that because, of course, life will be so much better if you can speak German, no doubt about that. But it's not that, hey, you know, if you don't speak the language, then you cannot make friends here. And I'm glad that you also talk about this. Yeah. Well, I mean, English would be a good second language if, you, uh, if you're not from England or an English-speaking country. Yeah. Um, I haven't had any... I, I couldn't speak for anybody who comes from <coughs> somewhere else, obviously. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean... Being able to communicate with, with people is one of the most important things. Besides from language, some of the other problems people think is it's hard to make German friends mm. or being integrated here. So let me first ask you, what is your definition about being integrated in Germany? <sighs> or perception in general? Well, I mean, I mean, to integrate is to follow the, the rules and the customs of, of, <laughs> of, of that particular country, isn't it? And I definitely drink enough beer and I eat enough meat to, Good to claim that. I've got some lederhosen, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if, I mean, you don't know whether, like, as a foreigner, 
sometimes you might do something wrong that you don't even realize. Yeah. Um, I don't know if there's any particular rules in Germany apart from turning up early or late, which yes. is a which is a thing. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, again, unless you're coming from a very very different culture, yeah, um, I couldn't speak for that. Of um, course, coming from England to here, the the main thing is is just the, the language really and a few minor things. Yeah. Um, Yeah, that's all. And making friends with German, is it as normal as making f local friends in England for you? Friends? Making friends with anybody is, is the same thing. You've got to have something in common to talk about and you've got to yes. have some, um, some wish to uh, connect with them further. I mean, you meet people all the time that you don't choose to call again or you don't choose to um, speak to next time you see them or something like that. It's, I think that's kind of... And I Normal, think but, yeah. there's certain true about this as well. I agree because um, in the beginning when my German was so bad actually, mm -hmm. and I couldn't make friends with German at that time because on one hand they want to help me with my Germans, but I realized that it was more like a one-side relationship. I'm the one who keeps ticking, you know, yeah, yeah. learning from them to learn German. But to make friendship, it actually has to be like not 50-50, but you have to offer something as well in with re not really in return of money, but you know, like people enjoy your company, something like that. So yeah, sure. it was easier for me in English at that time. Yeah, yeah. Some things may never change. Thing is, what about um, homesick? Um, yeah, to be honest, I'm, I haven't had that. Um, Because you love it here so much. Yeah, I mean, before I moved here, I was traveling for a two, one or two years, I think, because I, I'd only just started uh, getting opportunities to, to play my music or play my guitar um, overseas. And I was just happy to, to be like, seeing these new experiences and uh, being in these new places. Yeah. Um, I go back to England maybe two or three times a year, yeah. uh, catch up with my family and everything, but um, I think everyone's happy, everyone everyone has their own life that they do their own thing, and of course, um, this is just the thing that I decided to do, and I don't think, I, I'm not planning to go back to England, you know, it's okay. not, not at the moment, I want to stay here. Now I want to know more about your guitar lesson that you're actually teaching. So first of all, can you tell me something about like um, what kind of students do you have at the moment? Well, um, I was aiming for like the international students, you know, yeah. people who have come to Germany uh, from somewhere else, um, mostly English speaking, obviously, because yes. I, I don't speak any other language. <laughs> My German isn't strong enough to, to mm -hmm. teach with, I don't think. Um, so I was posting on the, the Munich International Friends page, hey, I'm, I'm here, is anybody interested? And slowly um, it sort of grew, but a lot of the people I teach, a uh, very mixed um, selection of professional people, they're, they're all working, they all have a desire to learn guitar, uh, but there's a very large mixture of, of where they're from, Spain, Italy, uh, uh, you know, China. <laughs> oh, cool. So actually... <laughs> Um, do you see that, I mean, the people when they join your guitar lesson, you know, they don't know each other. So no. do you see a change in terms of the social dynamics among this group after some weeks or some months learning? Well, what, what I wish would happen, and I've, I've, so, I've so spoken to my students a few times about this, I would like to make them all connected with each other. And I've, so far I haven't been successful in a way that I want to be. I've, okay. I've, I've, uh, in the groups themselves, I don't think they see them see each other outside of the lesson. So this is the first thing I would like them to do. I would like them to practice as that group uh, another time in the week so that they get the benefit of the lesson twice, but they don't pay twice, you know, they, I see, they yeah. can help each other. The other thing is to have the groups intermingling and have them like say one person posts, I have a little Facebook group for all of my students, which yeah. they can choose to join. Uh, if they said, hey everyone, I want to practice at English Garden on Saturday at four o'clock, does anybody want to come? It would be amazing if like, you know, sure. some people would be like, yeah, that sounds cool, yeah, I can do that. Because learning guitar isn't just, a, just about going to lessons, and I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm not saying this to like, <laughs> get less students. It's important to have a teacher, but it's important to, uh, like, augment it by learning from everyone else who's learning guitar as well and uh, you just spend more time practicing. I can definitely tell you it's better than what you thought. At least I actually make um, two female friends from there mm -hmm. and then I also asked one guy from Philippines. Um, I've, 
Yeah, I don't know if you remember him, but um, because I don't know how many lessons he was taking, mm. but we said, hey, let's play some song together, and we met once at least. But then after that, I moved to Berlin or travel around the world, so I couldn't make that happen, but I did. Mm. And I think it depends on also the person, you know, with the person a little bit more outgoing to take the initiative to, hey, let's say, do something together. Yeah, yeah. It will work. I think a lot of people want to do this sort of thing. They have the idea that, oh, that would be nice. But yeah, again, like maybe they're too busy, maybe they're too shy. Yeah. There's a lot of factors that uh, I'm not aware of, and you can't force people to do things. But I would be very happy to see my students uh, come together uh, a little bit more often. Yeah. Maybe it just needs more time, I guess. Yeah. For them I mean, to know yeah. each other more. Yeah, yeah. But they only see each other in that in their small groups of four, you know. Uh, we'll get there. We'll get there, I hope. So now let's come to the final part that is um, getting more personal and something that I don't know if he's willing to share. Okay. So Ryan, what is the biggest fuck up you had in Germany? Biggest fuck up? Um, well, one of the things that comes to mind straight away is the, 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 the health insurance. Because, okay. Because I didn't actually, I didn't know. And if you don't know something, you, you're not going to search for it, you know. But you have to be registered for your health insurance immediately. So I was, I didn't find out until about six months later. Oh, okay. So I ended up having to pay for those six months from, from the day that my Anne Meldung... Uh, Even though if you were not sick during the six months? Yeah, it's backdated. Okay. It, it's just the way it is. So okay. I ended up having to pay like a thousand euros, like pff, done. Like, and I was like... <laughs> so that was one little setback. Um, so anyone that's coming here, you need to make sure that you start paying that immediately. Otherwise, uh, you're going you, you, you're gonna to pay it anyway. Yeah. But it's going to be in one big lump sum. And you don't want that. Okay. No. So that's the biggest fuck up, all right. No, no, I don't think it's the biggest. What else? Um, it's just one of the things that definitely was a little bit of a setback. Um, nothing's really springing to mind. Maybe I've just been so lucky. I don't know. Uh, okay. <laughs> can it's you good. think of any ba bad fuck ups? No. I guess being a musician or freelancer, mm. you know, your income is not that stable. No. So there would be time, I hope not, but there would be time you thought about, oh damn, um, how can I survive next month? Do I have enough money to pay for my bill? All this stuff. Mm -hmm. Did you have that moment? And if you did, how did you overcome that? Um, I haven't had that problem since I was about 21 or 22 okay. because I've been debt free for as long as I can remember from that time. Um, I've always been pretty good with my money. I always have some here ready. Saving, okay. Um, so, I mean, I'm not, I know a lot of people are in, are in debt or they just don't have th these kind of savings. Um, but I've been lucky that I, I handle my money quite well. So okay. I, I know, for example, like if for the next few months I don't get any work at all, I'll still be fine. Yeah. And then in September, when I start my new term of guitar students again, um, then you know, hopefully it'll be fine. I mean, I've been doing it for 13, 14 years, making money from this piece of wood with some metal <laughs> strings on it. Um, I'm not saying that um, it'll always be okay, but I think generally I'll be fine. It's good to hear. <laughs> um, but what I did learn from being self-employed, which if people are just starting out to be self-employed, yeah. you cannot rely on one revenue stream. Yeah. You need at least three, four or five is better. Um, so where, where teaching comes down, gigs goes up. Yeah. When gigs go down, you know, you make money somewhere else. And I found another job that I'm doing at the moment where I'm doing song arranging. What is that? So uh, another musician is uh, planning to go to the studio. And before they can go to the studio, they need to make sure that their songs are all arranged. Okay. Which means, you know, the, song, the verse, choruses are all here. Maybe you change the rhythm of the guitar, add bass, uh, sorry, write to the bass lines, guitar solos, all this stuff. All this sort of stuff. So when she goes to the studio and spends all that money in the studio, which you need to be prepared for whenever you do go to a studio, yeah. um, she has everything on music sheets. She has the songs mapped out fully. She, she knows exactly how it's going to uh, be put together. So that's the job that I'm uh, uh, doing. Uh, and I'd like to be doing more of that sort of thing as well. I remember this advice because I'm starting and I realize as well mm. the importance of having different revenue streams. Mm. 
Uh, yeah. I've been checking on your Facebook mm -hmm. and I realized from time to time you share some kind of a mindset topics. Yeah, and one topic I wanted to ask you is about fear. Mm -hmm. There was a sentence from you. You were saying that where you are right now is actually depending on how much fear you were able to take. Yeah, how much of fear you, you, you're willing to, to overcome. This, yeah. is, this is where you are in your life right now. So when I thought about this sentence from you, I thought about, so how much fear I have been overcome or challenge I've overcome in order to make myself being in Germany. Mm -hmm. So um, if there are people who actually like you, um, maybe not a musician, but some other career would like to just come to Germany mm -hmm. and you know, they're afraid that, hey, you know, I only get one year of saving. I don't know if I can make it happen. Can I find a job where I have friends? What would be some advice you could give them? I don't know. <laughs> because because yeah. you, you have to be pragmatic and practical. You have to plan. Yeah. But, you know, from my side, um, you shouldn't be afraid to just see what happens day by day because you don't know. Like, your, your day could change just by meeting one new person or by a new opportunity coming up. Um, so, I mean, what's the worst thing? If you came over here and you, 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 it didn't work and you lost all your savings, then you've learnt something. You're... you're you're able to do more than you could before. Yeah. Maybe you have to go back home or, or, or get some more savings again. Do it again. But if it's what you want. Yeah. yeah. As long as you're, as long as you're on the path of what you want to do, it doesn't matter how many steps forward uh, it, it takes. It's, it's going to be fine. I really like uh, this positive mindset of you because um, just a story to share is when I start traveling, um, I had a travel guitar, mm -hmm. and I asked him, um, should I bring it or not? Because you know, taking Ryanair. It's not possible sometimes. And I said, hey, you know what, Isaac, just bring it because you never know what's going to happen. And eventually, when I was in Las Palmas, I just told you, mm -hmm. someone were looking for a guitar player and they said, okay, if you can play a song for us for one night, then that night you don't have to pay for the hotel or host or something like that. And that was perfect. Yeah. I didn't know that before. Yeah. But unfortunately, now the guitar is in Hong Kong because I cannot <laughs> take it back to Germany. Ah, uh, that's a shame. But one of the, one of the things uh, I've, I've posted before, like if I had two things, I would take my passport and my guitar. Uh, this is the, the key to, to getting uh, opportunities like meeting people for sure um, and yeah, making money even if you're busking on the streets or um, if you can get gigs. You know, I think it doesn't matter what level you're at. If, yeah. you, if you can make someone feel good about hearing some music, I think the benefits are always going to be there. So. Okay, last but not least, uh, Ryan, thank you. And so with people actually, uh, especially in Munich, if they want to learn guitar, how can they find more, more about you? Good question. Well, they can go to my Facebook page, which is actually called Gitarren Unterricht in München. You're speaking German. Stroke, actually. learn guitar in Munich. Yeah. Um, the lessons are predominantly in English. And um, I, I'm sure you'll leave a link. Uh, yes, of course. Just, just here. here. <laughs> here or whatever <laughs> yeah um but yeah i post videos on there regularly and um anyone who wants to learn the guitar and they want to do it in a social environment with other people who are living here as well probably going through the same um uh, motions of, of being a, a munchner um then that's my aim i, I don't want to just teach guitar i want to i want to make a, a social network for guitarists for, for, for new guitarists. Yeah. So um, thank you so much. If guys, you have any questions about my friend Ryan, feel free to leave a comment as well. I cannot guarantee he will answer, but I will force him to answer. So thank you so much. See you guys next time. Bye.